Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a first look at the upcoming 1X Player X1. What I've got here is an early prototype. They were kind enough to send this over for testing, and I'm actually really excited about this unit. Now, as you can see, we've got a pretty large screen. This is actually coming in at 10.95 inches, and they're calling this a three-in-one handheld. As you can see, we've got these controllers attached to the side. These are totally detachable. And in this video, this is basically a first look. We're going to do some preliminary testing. I will have a full video coming up very soon, but I kind of wanted to get this out of the way because I've really been excited about this device. But we can go ahead and remove these controllers, a little bit of RGB around those analog sticks. Now, I'm excited about this not because of the overall design. Now, there's actually several different ways that we can use this. There's some awesome built-in features. What I'm really excited about is the chip they opted to use here. Because this is not an AMD-powered device. This is actually powered by the new Intel Core Ultra series, and they have a few different variants. But right now, we're in tablet mode. We can pick this up and use it just like any other Windows tablet. They also offer a detachable keyboard, plus we've got this stand style case, all of this magnetically attaches. And obviously right now we're kind of in laptop mode. Everything folds up really nicely. And of course we also have handheld mode, so we can use this just like a gaming console. Got those detachable controllers set up right on the side here. And one thing I actually really like about this are the built-in speakers. They're tuned by Harman. We've got dual stereo speakers, but this thing gets really loud. Now taking a look around the back here, very nice little design. We've got a little bit of RGB around the sides here. Uh, we can actually change this from software. This does have the 1X player software built in. So we can go into the control center, adjust the TDP, brightness, resolution, volume, and of course the RGB. With these new Core Ultra chips, at least the one I have here, we can go up to 28 watts, and I've been seeing some really decent performance. I've done some testing on the channel with the new Core Ultra, and personally, I'm a huge fan, as long as it's set up correctly and we're sending enough power to that new ArcEye GPU. Up top, we've got our turbo button, which will put us in turbo mode, up to 28 watts. Ventilation for the built-in cooling system. We've also got our volume rocker, our power button slash fingerprint sensor, and you might notice we've got another little port here marked Oculink. If you're not familiar with Oculink, basically what this gives us is PCIe externally, and this will do up to 63 gigs instead of, let's say, USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4's 40 gig. In turn, you can definitely get much better performance out of an eGPU, and they also sent along their new 1X eGPU. This is something I will be doing a dedicated video on. Got a few mini PCs I want to test it on, a couple handhelds, and I'm really excited about this one because what we've got here is an AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT. It's a portable eGPU. It'll work over Oculink and USB 4. Tons of I.O. that we can add to different devices. And yeah, this thing is going to put down some awesome performance. I've got the magnetic kickstand case attached to the rear here. Just wanted to give you a look. And when it comes to I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Love having a full-size USB. And I've also got the covers installed right now, but we can actually pop these out, and this is where our controllers are going to attach. As you can see, it uses pogo pins for the connection, so we've got a physical connection with these controllers, but I believe they're also going to be selling a center module for these controllers that will turn them wireless, so you could just have your controller act as a wireless controller if you wanted to use this in tablet mode or connected to a larger display. And over here on the left-hand side, we've got two USB 4 ports, and both of these are 40 gig ports. So if you didn't want to use that Oculink, let's say you had a Thunderbolt 3 or a Thunderbolt 4 eGPU dock, you could always connect it over USB 4. So like I mentioned, 1X will be offering the X1 in a couple different variants. So you can pick this up with different storage amounts, different RAM amounts, and different CPUs. Their highest end model right now is going to be the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. On the channel, I've actually done a lot of testing with this. It is a great performer, 16 cores, 22 threads, and the new Arc i GPU with 8XE cores. But I opted to get a lower end variant because this is a chip that I've been wanting to test. We've got the new Intel Core Ultra 5 135H. 14 cores, 18 threads. We've basically got the same graphics, new Arc i GPU with 8XE cores. But this way, we don't have those extra cores fighting for power because we're using a handheld up to 28 watts. I think we're going to see some great performance out of this chip. 
Four performance cores up to 4.6 GHz, eight efficiency cores up to 3.6, and two low power E cores up to 2.5 GHz. Again, we've got that new Arc i GPU with eight XE cores, and this will do up to 2.2 GHz. And since we're using a new Intel Core Ultra Series CPU, we've got a built in NPU, but when it comes to gaming, at least right now, we don't really need to mess with that. This model has 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X at 7467 megatransfers per second. The display they opted to use is absolutely beautiful. It's an LTPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600, 120 hertz, and it's 10.95 inches. We've also got a 1TB M.2 SSD, this is PCIe 4.0, dual stereo speakers tuned by Harman, a 65.02 watt hour battery with 100 watt fast charging capabilities, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11. So of course, with this first look video, I don't have all of the performance metrics listed. I do need to do a little bit of tweaking and tuning with this chip. Again, I have tested the Intel Core Ultra 155H. I've been able to kind of tweak that to get amazing performance. But since I'm working with a newer chip, I figured we'd just take a look at a little bit of gameplay real quick. Obviously, in handheld mode right now, and in my next video, we will take a closer look at all of the controls and everything. But we've got Forza Horizon 5 1200p with a low medium mix. We're looking at an average of around 87 FPS right now, but we are at 28 watts. Now that's where a lot of tweaking and tuning needs to come from Intel and the developer of this handheld console. They need to split up that power correctly between the GPU and the CPU. This is one of the big reasons I wanted to get my hands on the 135H. We've got less cores than the 155H. Now, of course, at a higher wattage, that 155H will outperform this. But I think at these lower wattages, we're going to see some awesome performance out of this little chip. We can only do up to 28 watts right now with uh, the way they have everything set up. Now, I'm sure with third-party tuning software, I could actually take this up a bit. But I wanted to see what it would do out of the box, and this is not bad at all. Next thing I wanted to show off was gaming in laptop mode. So I've got the detachable keyboard, and this is a backlit detachable keyboard. Easy to go on. Actually pretty nice, and it will protect the screen once we fold it up. But here we have GTA 5 1200p. We're at normal settings, and uh, as you can see from Afterburner, we're well over 60 FPS. Now we do have a 120 hertz display here, but we can actually set it to 60 if we really wanted to. Turn V-Sync on with this game, and we don't have to pull as much power to run this game at 60. I've just got an uncapped frame rate to show you what this thing can do, and we're getting an average of around 104 FPS. And finally, I wanted to show off tabletop mode. I'm just using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. I believe that One X will be selling an adapter to go in the middle of the detachable controllers to make it wireless. Not sure if it'll be Bluetooth or if they're going to use a dongle of some sort. But here we have Cyberpunk 2077 1200p low settings, and you can see we're right on the cusp of 60 FPS with this. Now this is one of those games that has given me issues on these new Arc i GPUs. Intel has admitted that there are a few bugs here and there. Like for instance, if I go into the settings right now and change my XESS scaling mode to let's say FSR, performance is going to fall right on its face. I mean, we're not going to get much at all out of this game. You will have to do a complete reboot of the game itself in order for it to work correctly. So hopefully that's fixed up in the next couple driver updates. So overall, I think the new One X Player X1 is a really interesting handheld, and they're not considering it just a dedicated handheld. It's a three-in-one handheld. We've got tablet mode, desktop mode, and obviously we can go to console mode with it. Having Oculink up top is really interesting for something like this, and I will have a full video coming up. I will be doing some emulation testing. We're going to test out that Oculink. Got a lot of AAA games that I want to throw at this thing. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the One X Player X1, let me know in the comments below. I can throw it in the next video. But I'm super excited about these new Intel-powered handheld devices. Love to see Intel come to the market with a more powerful iGPU that can kind of compete now. And with Arc, they do have a lot to gain with their driver updates. NVIDIA and AMD have been on the market for a long time. They've got their drivers really fleshed out. Every time Intel puts out a new Arc update, we do see a jump in performance in certain games, maybe even just overall OpenGL performance. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they do, to see what they really bring to market with these handhelds. 
But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. Full review will be coming soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the One X Player X1, I will leave a link to their official website and Indiegogo. Remember, they've got the higher end variant, or you can go with this 135H. I'm going to see if I can get my hands on the 155H also, but this is the prototype they sent over, and I really want to dive deep and see what this thing can do. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.